Hey guys, MC Stu here, and today we're going to take a look at the Ryzen Luxury Cruiser again. Um, so this time what we're going to do is uh, take a look at a advanced build. Uh, this will also be a beam overload build like the one we did uh, last week, uh, which was a budget beam overload phaser build. Uh, so this is going to be more of the advanced level um, using C-Store traits uh, fully, as well as low-B consoles, um, all things that have been covered in the, the beginner's guides, um, the things you want to work towards all kind of coming together on a build like this. I did decide to go with Polaron on this one uh, per request uh, that I had on the YouTube channel here. Um, I do have a budget Polaron build, um, but there was a request for something a little bit more advanced for Polaron, so I figured we go ahead and just work that into the, uh, the new Rising event ship. Uh, so before we jump into it, uh, as always, I just want to say thank you for everyone that has subbed to the channel, comments, and is part of the community. Uh, we do have a Discord server um, that is very active, lots of help in there. We are also running a giveaway um, for an Infinity um, Tier 6 uh, lockbox ship of your choice. It will be PC only, uh, but if you hit up the Discord and go to the giveaway channel, uh, everybody is more than welcome to enter. All right, let's let's uh, let's go ahead and jump right on into it and take a look at the loadout on the ship. All right. Okay, so first off up front, what we have is the advanced Piso. Piso, I'm pretty sure I'm saying that right, Polaron Beam Array. Uh, this comes from the Lakari rep. I went with this as opposed to a crafted one um, because once you get to level six or tier six in your rep, the weapons that you can get from that have an extra bonus that you see at the top of the tooltip there um, where you're getting an additional 2% bonus damage, uh, all damage for that weapon. Um, so anytime that um, I'm looking at a particular energy type, if I can fit, unless there's some other lockbox weapon or something like that. A lot of times these modifiers don't really make a big difference depending on, I mean, that, that'll, if you're just going straight DPS, if you're going for like tanking or um, potentially science stuff and you need those secondary effects, maybe to hold threat, those kinds of things, the modifiers don't make a huge difference on the actual damage output of the weapon. So if you're, you know, putting together a particular energy type build, definitely take a look through your rep weapons and, uh, and see what's available for that energy type and that type of weapon, if it's beam or if it's cannon uh, because if you are maxed out on that rep you will get that extra two percent bonus all damage for that weapon uh, okay next we have another rep item and again so i went through the the rep system looking for any polaron um, beams and so the one that we just mentioned and this one which is from the temporal uh, reputation um, also is going to have a Polaron flavor and it uh, also has that plus two percent so that's why we're using these two mainly um, we are using a two-piece for the Lucari and we'll get to that uh, when we get down to the consoles there um, so I'm going to kind of just jump around here so we can kind of cover things quicker try and keep this video under an hour I'm using three just standard crafted fully upgraded Polaron beam arrays. Um, they're not lockbox or anything special, just standard beam array. Um, for the torpedo, I am using the Dark Matter torpedo as normal, along with the two-piece Lorca console, which I cover pretty much in every single video because it's on pretty much all my builds. Um, now, this does make for kind of a weird combo. I don't normally run more than one torpedo, and I certainly won't run them generally in the back. Um, but in this instance, when you're dealing with Polaron, depending on the traits you have, and like I said, I just use the ones that I went over in previous videos of, you know, top kind of all around good utility traits that you can use on pretty much any build. There are things like Terran Goodbye and stuff that would replace this morphogenic set, which is uh, the tactical console and these two items. But if you don't have those, and those are expensive lockbox ship traits. So I left that off, and that's why we're using this morphogenic set. So let's just take a quick look at this. So we have the morphogenic um, energy weapon in the back, and essentially this is an omnidirectional or a cannon scatter volley or cannon, I, I guess, um, or you know, cannon rapid fire, cannon or beam array, depending on the firing mode that you're in. So if you hit beam overload, this is going to fire like an omni. If you hit uh, rapid fire or cannon scatter volley, it is going to uh, fire cannon shots out of it. Um, it doesn't do tons of damage. Again, this is mainly here for this three-piece set. And then for the lastly on the weapon portion of this, the morphogenic Polaron energy torpedo, 
um, this does Polaron damage. Now you could run this up front if you did not have this torpedo yet. Um, I've certainly done that on my free to play and it does work well. It's just the, the, this torpedo is just so good. The dark matter torpedo along with the two piece set. I, I just have to have it on these builds here. Um, so, and then the tactical console, what it does is it's going to give you uh, plus 19.7% uh, damage to foes that are in your rear arc. It's going to give you 26.3 Polaron damage. Um, it's going to give us uh, 39.4 drain expertise, and then it's going to give us a negative 10% weapons power cost, which is huge for beam overload builds. Uh, the drain portion of this is not really consequential, and I know there's those that'll say, I mean, that's the innate uh, proc that Polaron has here as a chance to, to drain basically. Um, but drain is not in a great place unless you're just specifically building towards it. And I mean, building towards it hard. Um, if that's something you're interested in, uh, Augie put out actually a video last week. I'll link it in the description. Uh, it was a specific drain build. Uh, if you're interested uh, in taking a look at that, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a great video. Uh, but in terms of trying to boost your drain off of, you know, a weapon or something it is going to be a waste of time. So if you're running Polaron, unless it's just a 100% dedicated drain build, do not worry about boosting your drain because of the innate ability that uh, Polaron weapons have. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into the three piece on the Morphogenic set. This is really what, you know, this whole thing's kind of built around. Um, so the two piece is going to give us 15% recharge time reduction for fire at will, overload, scatter volley, basically all of our different firing modes for torpedoes, cannons, and for beams. Uh, so that's nice. Uh, the big one here, though, is when you use a particular firing mode, so for instance, fire at will or beam overload, so any kind of beam ability, you're going to get plus 2% critical chance maximum 6%, so all these abilities are going to stack three times. Cannon Scatter Volley, you're going to get a stacking 10% critical severity, total of 30%, and then any kind of uh, torpedo special firing mode, you are going to get an additional 7.5 weapons damage. Um, and this is... Um, this is a cat one bonus. So this isn't huge. You're getting, you know, 22%. It certainly doesn't hurt. Um, and you know, we went over cat one, cat two bonus damage in a previous video a week or two back. Um, and I want to make sure again, I'm, I'm stating that it's not that cat one's better than, or cat two's better than cat one. You have to have cat one in order for cat two to shine. So this doesn't hurt, um, but it's really not the focus on this two piece. This additional 6% critical chance and 30% critical severity is huge. Um, and it's it's definitely worth having if you're doing Polaron and you don't have the Starship trait Terran Goodbye, which comes from the Terran Warship. Um, this set comes from the mission Home in the Gamma arc. Um, so definitely pick that up. If you're doing any kind of Polaron build, um, you're definitely going to want this three piece here. Mission's a little bit long. You can speed run it, but uh, again, it's it's definitely worth picking up if you're doing anything Polaron related. Uh, as for the space set, again, pretty standard. We're using our colony fleet, our fleet colony deflector for the critical chance, critical severity. We're using the uh, uh, prevailing innovative, I don't know why I always twist, twist up my tongue there, uh, engine for the speed boost and the tactical bridge officer ability reduction. And then we are using the two piece from the discovery rep and um, this, uh, along with the Tilly Shield, this is giving us a huge boost. The two pieces for our hull regen and the Tilly Shield is giving us some additional um, shield uh, damage that it'll do to the foes based on your shield power. So currently with where my shield power is set, which is pretty low, I'm at 11.5% increased damage. Um, so pretty standard here. You'll see these on most of my builds. They will vary a little bit. You could alternatively, if you didn't have all of this here, you could go with like a gem at R set. Um, you could use the two piece on that for the slight boost you get to Polaron. Um, the Terran core probably would do a little bit better for uh, beam overload, but I like the survivability that I'm getting from these two, although I didn't run into much issue um, with this build when I ran the uh, the ISA. And again, always we could always default to the Deuterium Stabilized Warp Core for that 15% weapons power cost reduction. Um, so there's a lot of options there uh, for these beam overload builds. 
Next up for, uh, well, let's look at the devices. So we're using energy amplifiers for the plus 20% bonus damage. We're using the subspace field module, uh, modulator for the increased damage resistance uh, when we need it in a pinch. We're using the deuterium surplus for the extra speed boost. And then we're using our Kobayashi Maru, um, which calls in a Kobayashi Maru ship that uh, starts uh, spewing out buffs to uh, you and your team. Uh, engineering consoles. So first three are going to be the go-to lobby consoles. Again, there's a whole video just on these specific three consoles, which is something you should be after. Um, if you're trying to build up, you know, your DPS, these consoles are huge. This is kind of the core of where you're going to really draw a lot of that critical chance and critical severity, all three of these here. Next, let's take a look. This is a part of the two piece of the, uh, Lucari set. Um, so the console itself, its passives are giving us plasma damage, which on this build doesn't matter. Although you could use this obviously on a plasma build. There's also a plasma version of the Polaron weapon here that you could use uh, to go with that. Um, it's giving us the Polaron damage of 39.4, which is pretty hefty. It's like having another tactical console there. We're getting some additional flight turn uh, rate, which is great. This ship turns and handles pretty pretty darn well, well already, uh, but you know more the merrier. And then we're getting some additional maximum shield capacity out of it. The two piece for this is going to give us a 15% Cat 1 boost to Polaron damage. Uh, it's also giving us a boost to photon uh, projectiles, um, although we are not currently running a photon, uh, but that's something you could look at pairing again if you didn't have the, uh, the morphogenic yet and you're just starting to put this together um, and you didn't have the, uh, say, the dark matter torpedo. Uh, we're also getting some additional drain expertise again on this build that is really inconsequential. Uh, next, we are using the assimilated module. This is from the Omega rep, and this is here primarily for the critical chance, critical severity. Also, the extra five uh, weapons power is very nice as well. We're getting some control and drain, and again, that's not really a big deal. All right. Uh, next, we are using a console from the uh, Gamma Rep, and this is the Ordnance Accelerator. You will also see this on uh, Torpedo and Kinetic builds, as it does uh, quite a bit for uh, mine recharge time, projectile weapons damage, um, phaser damage, um, but it also has a Polaron boost, and that's why we have this here. It'll also allow our torpedoes to fire slightly uh, faster. Uh, shared cooldown, no. So if we had mines on this, that would uh, allow that. So this is just giving us some projectile damage. This is boosting the, the torpedo in the front and the torpedo in the back uh, when the one in the back does fire. So we're getting 26.3 for the projectile damage, and we're getting 26.3 for Polaron weapons damage. Um, so there is, uh, I'm not using a two piece uh, with this. There isn't a beam. Well, I take that back. There is a beam weapon in this. It's a omnidirectional beam. And I am not sure the rules on those. Um, you can use like a crafted and a lockbox one. Um, but the, uh, omnidirectionals beam weapons from the rep, they're going to count as one of those. And I believe it counts the same as like a mission drop, uh, which also is like a lockbox one. So this counts as an Omni, this morphogenic weapon. So um, I'll have to check on that, to be honest. I'm not sure if it counts. Uh, it can't count as a crafted. So yeah, you, you wouldn't be able to to slot uh, an omni, Omni-directional from your, uh, from a rep, uh, the rep system. So um, but there, there is that two piece, but again, it's just not compatible with running the morphogenic set. Okay, moving on. We have the zero point energy conduits. This is here for the additional critical chance and the additional um, power to all subsystems. So this is helping out all of our subsystems along with weapons and shields and everything. So always nice to get a little bit extra. Again, in the beam overloads, that's very important. Uh, but the big selling point on this is the 2.4 critical chance. This comes from the Romulan rep. All right, next we have the M6 computer. This comes from the Temporal Destroyer. It is a, um, I believe it's a tier three ship. You can get it from the ship vendor and it is a, um, you can buy it for, uh, for uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Dilithium, sorry guys, it's late. Um, so you can buy this for Dilithium, 75,000 Dilithium and um, you pull this off of it, the ship, you know, obviously it's, it's a cool ship. Um, but it's not really useful at end game. So you're just basically buying this console that comes on the ship for 75, 
thousand dilithium, but it's definitely worth it. And this is basically your your poor man's version of the um, of the domino console, or at least the clicky portion of it. Um, so when you click this for 15 seconds, we're going to get 15 percent bonus all damage. Um, we are going to get 25 percent cooldown reduction for tactical bridge officer abilities. Big one here also is 20% fire cycling haste for all weapons. And then we're going to get some additional accuracy and defense. So uh, nice little clicky to have. There is no passive on it because it comes off of a lower tier ship like that. Um, if you have the DPRM, which I do, but I didn't put it on here for this build. If you have the DPRM, then you're going to want to use that instead. That's definitely going to be more beneficial, I think, on this build. Uh, next, we have in the tactical slot, uh, the Lorker, Lorker, the Lorca console. And this is here for the massive amount of critical chance you get, almost 4%. We get some additional uh, weapons power, 7.9, which is a big boost, and a huge amount of shield penetration, 157.5 uh, points on that. So very, very nice, uh, excellent console. And the two-piece for that, as always, it's like a broken record because it's on every single one of my builds pretty much. Uh, is on a critical hit, you are going to pick up... 1% of critical severity lasts for 20 seconds. That timer resets every time you get a critical hit and stacks up to 25 times. So essentially, if you have a even halfway, you know, high critical chance, you're going to build up this extra 25 critical severity very quickly. And as long as you're continually getting a critical hit at least once every 20 seconds, you will maintain that 25%. Uh, we already went all over the morphogenic console from the home mission and then lastly i have a tactical console from the fleet spire obviously polaron and i'm using a vulnerability locator um, if i had x upgraded this which this is my paid account and i i, I, I only have a couple left and i just didn't want to use it on this ship to be frank um, there's quite a it's an this is an excellent ship especially for free it's very versatile um, but if you're buying lots of ships as i have on this you know over the years and stuff there's quite a bit of stuff that outclasses it and i i only had a few of those uh, x upgrades and so i decided just to go ahead and save them but it, had i used it i would move uh, the Lorca console up to that universal slot or um and replace it with another one of these these tactical consoles from the fleet spire um so if i had that extra slot it would most likely be another one of these tactical consoles all right let's take a look at the skills uh so again same skill tree we didn't change anything special here this is what i'm running for tanking uh dps cannons beam overload um and I'm also, I can run basically full science on this. The only thing that this skill tree isn't going to be able to do is a drain, uh, as Augie was demonstrating in that video I mentioned earlier. And it's not going to do real well on control because I'm not grabbing these, although I can still with consoles build that out pretty good. So this is a pretty good universal um, uh, skill tree to use. Uh, for specializations on this, we're using the strategist as well as the intel uh, officer specializations. Let's take a look at the traits. Um, so for the traits, the first three are all gonna be stock ones. So the first one is gonna be innocuous. This is here for the extra 5% critical severity and the negative 25% threat generation. Uh, next, we have fleet coordinator, and this is here for the boost that you get out of it. So it's 2% bonus damage, including yourself and every other teammate. So on a regular old TFO, you're gonna get a plus 10% bonus damage from running this. We have beam training since obviously this is a beam build next we have a good day to die good day to die turns uh where is it there it is go down fighting into a clickable that gives us plus 50 percent bonus damage for 15 seconds without that you can only activate this ability if you are below 50 percent hull by having a good day to die it allows you to be able to click this anytime you want and it has a 45 second cooldown uh, next we are using terran targeting this is here for the plus 15 percent critical severity excellent boost for uh, just taking up one slot there um, next on the list here is going to be intelligence attache or intelligence agent attache and what this is doing is for every critical hit we get it's shaving two uh, percent of the cooldown time left on any given captain ability so for instance the go down fighting we just clicked 
Um, had I been getting critical hits while this was running, it would be shaving off 2% of whatever the remaining time was. And you'll find that this ability is going to be up quite a bit, as well as uh, Attack Pattern Omega and some of the other ones that I'm not really using a lot, like Brace for Impact. I'm using it for the... Uh, you know, survivability aspect of it. Um, so I'm, I'm not using it as a damage output, which you can with another trait, but if you were, then intelligence attache would also be greatly helping you with, with that as well. So any of your tact or your bri or bridge officers, let me reset <laughs> any of your captain's abilities. So if this was say, I don't know, something totally different, a mine build or whatever, um, transport mines or relocate mines is also a captain's ability this will work on any of the different um classes that you can be engineering science uh it's definitely worth having for pretty much you know any any build for the most part to be able to use those captain's abilities much much more often next we are using adapted offense this is giving us a stacking critical chance and severity uh, next, we are using Anchored. I kind of go back and forth with this one, depending on the build. Um, if you're running, say, like groups, you know, organized groups where you have tanks and, you know, and things like that, um, this is a lot better to run, in my opinion. The issue is, is that, so well, let, let's go to the way it works. So what happens is when you are stationary, um, every five seconds, you are going to get additional bonus damage, um, and that's going to stack. Uh, up to 20%. So every five seconds, um, you are getting 5% of bonus all damage, but you're also losing five all damage resistance. And so that's a pretty big hit um, where, you know, if you end up losing 20, you know, 20 resistance can be a big problem if you start getting focused. Um, so if it's, you know, depending on the builds I'm doing or when how I'm running, this ship's has pretty good just kind of innate survivability it seems like at least the runs i've done in it i haven't had much problems but um there, there is a significant trade-off in my opinion on this again if you're running organized runs it's not as big of a deal because someone else is going to be attracting that damage for you and that becomes you know much less of a problem but if you can run it you can afford to run it uh that 20 percent bonus damage boost you get is very nice to stack on top of everything else all right, lastly, on the personal space traits, we have self-modulating fire, and this is giving us on critical hit, your energy weapons and projectile weapons gain 50% shield penetration for 10 seconds. Uh, this can only trigger every 45 seconds, so I kind of go back and forth on how worth this is because I'm getting a lot of critical hits, and you know, say it's on some lower level targets, this may only go off once or twice, maybe twice at least, you know, in a run, but generally not three or four times. So there might be some better options to slot uh, for this. This this tends to be a lot better, I think, for the kinetic builds and torpedoes where, you know, getting through those shields is uh, is, is a very big deal on something like that. All right, let's take a look at the starship traits. Um, so I'm going to start with the last four here, and we'll come back to the first one. So these four are from my top four picks for sea store ships. And those sea store ships were chosen for the ship themselves needing to be decent and usable, but most importantly, the starship traits. So these starship traits are going to be usable on pretty much all of your standardized builds, beam overload, cannon scatter volley, um, Two of them you could use on your torpedo builds, but most of your, you know, if you're an entry level player, someone that's playing for a couple of years, you're just starting to buy ships, you're going to get the most usage out of these these traits here for, for most of what you're doing. As you've played for a while, you start to explore science or torpedo builds, which are much more complicated and expensive builds, then you'll find you'll need other stuff and some of these things won't be as important. But for pretty much everything else, um, these, these traits are going to be your go-to. So let's just take a look at these here real quick. Um, so we have uh, emergency weapons power cycle. This is giving us a massive reduction to our weapons power cost for 30 seconds every Every time we activate emergency power to weapons and this ability with the cooldowns we're using is up pretty much 100% of the time. So this trait is running constantly. It's also giving us a plus 20% fire cycling haste, which is huge. And this works on cannons, rapid fire, you know, any of your firing modes that are energy weapons, which would be, you know, beam arrays, dual beam banks and um, cannons. All right, next we have Strike from Shadows, and this is here for the critical chance and the bonus all damage. Um, also, very important is the negative 60% uh, 
damage reduction or not damage reduction uh threat generation reduction that you get from this so essentially if you are damaging a foe that does not have you targeted that's what's going to proc this ability um even on a single target build like i'm running here there's no problem proccing this if you're running cannon scatter volley or fire at will or something like that um then you're going to have no issue getting this to proc this is something that i also use on my torpedo and my science builds as well because that that reduction is uh, is very nice on the on the threat generation and you can always use all damage bonus uh critical chance again always nice so five percent is a is a nice little boost there Next, we have Promise of Veracity, and this is giving us plus 4% bonus weapons damage for the duration of combat when using pilot or tactical bridge officer abilities. Uh, maximum, maximum uh, what is it? Max once per four seconds stacks up to five times. So we're getting 20% basically bonus damage on this anytime we're activating a bridge officer ability that is tactical or pilot um, so especially on a build like this with the morphogenic set uh, we are activating a lot of tactical abilities uh, firing modes and it, it this thing is just going to run constantly so it takes a little bit of time to build up because you can only do it every four seconds but relatively that's not very long so 16 seconds you know if, if that's all timed out right 20 at the most and this is maxed and, and you're you're off to the races uh, lastly, for my top four um, is Supercharged Weapons. Uh, this comes off of the Tactical Odyssey. And what this does is firing a torpedo gives you one stack Supercharged Weapons buff. And what that means is your Directed Energy Weapons are going to gain 10% damage for 20 seconds and again that re resets itself and that's a cat one boost so that's okay we're getting a plus five uh 1.5 critical chance for 20 seconds and a plus 6.6 .6 critical severity um i'm not seeing that this stacks gain one stack i'm pretty sure this okay it's right in front of my face stacks three times um so that that is a nice hefty boost once you get four or three torpedoes out um this is a very nice build up but do bear in mind that this is only something that's going to work for an energy weapons build um, that has one torpedo or more but you you wouldn't put this on a torp build for instance even though torpedoes proc it the boost it gives is to energy weapons so you're going to want to use this on an energy weapon build that has a torpedo uh, very good all around uh, trait to have lastly on the starship traits we have uh, Super Weapons Ingenuity. This comes from the Zendi Primate ship. This is a Lobi trait. This is covered in my top four picks of Lobi ships um, that are, again, same kind of criteria, good ships and have a specific uh, use out of it. In this instance, this is boosting our beam overload ability. So beam overload uh, runs for um 10 seconds it has a 30 second cooldown and with the cooldown reductions that i'm using and most of us are using um the ability is ready again in 15 seconds so you can't go any lower than half of that recharge time so 15 seconds is the fastest cooldown you can get so that leaves us with a gap of five seconds that it's not running since the beam overload ability only runs for 10 seconds uh, so by running this trait what it does is it extends that beam overload out by five seconds so Beam Overload now runs for 15 seconds with our cooldown reductions. Beam Overload can be reactivated every 15. So basically, with this trait and the proper cooldown, you are running Beam Overload 100% of the time. You can achieve this with um, with using, uh, what is it, um, Photonic Officer. But you do have a little bit of gap in there because Photonic Officer has... A longer cooldown than the action time of that ability as well so you will run into some rotation gaps with that here and there um, but still you, even with i'm running this on my free to play and i don't have a uh, ox to bat cooldown set up on free to play um, i'm just not through grinding it out because it's so expensive but um i'm able i have this trait though with lobby that i got from an event and having that trait on on some of the builds that i have on that beam overloads i'm able to do over 200 just over 200 barely but just over 200 and that's even with not having a complete 100 percent uptime um so this trait is huge for beam overload it's basically like withering barrage for cannon scatter volley which um withering barrage extends that ability out for you as well 
All right, let's take a look at our space reputation traits here. So again, pretty much same lineup. Um, advanced targeting, 20% critical severity. We are using uh, precision, which is giving us the plus 5% critical chance. We are using the torpedo pre-fire sequence. Um, since I have the torpedo up front and there is the one on the back, uh, I don't want to ignore that, although it doesn't fire much. But in any case, this is giving us a 15.6% bonus torpedo weapons damage. I normally wouldn't slot anything to boost that one thing on the ship, even though that one thing is a good torpedo and the two sets good, um, two pieces good. But th the issue for me is I'm, I just don't know what else to slot here that's going to be beneficial. Um, because I'm running aux to bat, and even if I wasn't, I generally don't put any kind of power into my auxiliary. So the uh, there's one here, this one here. If if you are running auxiliary, this is a nice one to have where you get bonus damage based on your auxiliary levels. Uh, because mine are set so low, this number is really low. So um, this is more a filler for me. If you guys have any other suggestions, I mean, what else are you guys using, you know, on a, on a build like this? Um, I feel like, you know, that's a nice boost, but again, it's not really synergizing with the whole build just with that particular thing. So let me know in the comments what uh, we guys think on that. Uh, next we're using Tyler's duality and this is giving us the critical chance boost for, um, it scales with the, the size of your hit points, your hull. And then we're using magnified firepower and this is giving all weapons damage passive boost of 6.3% bonus cat two damage. All right, let's take a look at our bridge officer, um, abilities here. So let's start with taking a look at these tactical modes that I have, okay? So with the Morphogenic set, if you remember on the three-piece set, when we activate all these different firing modes, it gives us all of these boosts. Um, so what we have is three different firing modes that do not share a cooldown with the highest rated one here being our primary attack, which is beam overload. But we have our torpedo spread, which is nice. And then we have cannon scatter volley, which right off the bat might... You know, why do you have that? There's no cannon on here, although the morphogenic weapon does do a cannon, you know, firing mode, which but that, that's no big deal. But let's take a look at, at what this does. OK, so if we take a look at our stats and we're looking at our critical chance sitting still is at forty five point eight percent and our critical severity is at one hundred and ninety eight point five. I generally like to see these over 50, but on a layout like this, it's a little bit harder, especially not being a Romulan uh, without having a whole bunch of Romulan operatives. So watch what happens when we're, let's forget about torpedoes. Torpedoes give you that cat one boost. Um, so let's just forget about that for the moment and take a look at these other two firing modes. OK, so cannon scatter volley. I click that and there's plus 10 on my critical severity. Let's click a beam ability. And there's plus two on our critical chance so let's get these cooling down here because these stack up to uh three times and as long as you're continuing to run them so we're 18 two 18s so that's another nice little boost there and let's go beam overload so when it's all said and done this is going to be sitting at almost 52 almost 52 percent critical chance and 228 critical severity um which is just a huge boost that you get from running this. And on most ships, well, I don't want to say most ships, but most ships that you're going to be doing, you know, more of a DPS build, there's plenty of room to fit all of this in. Um, so having this, this cannon scatter volley, I'm not really giving up much because there's plenty of room for it. It doesn't matter what level it's at. I just need to be able to proc it um, so that we're able to build this up. And as long as you're continuing to activate these abilities, this is going to keep these boost at that three stacks. I have it on my spam bar, so it's just continually spamming when I'm in combat and keeping that boost up. Um, so that that is the deal. That is the you know what's special about this morphogenic set. Any of these individual pieces, I would m never really use for anything individually at all. Uh, but having that 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 three piece bonus where we're able to boost those abilities make it worth having that all three of these slots taken up for that. And that's kind of a rare thing that I won't say that much when it comes to you know multi you know, set bonuses. A lot of times people get tr sidetracked with chasing that set bonus, but it, a lot of times those set bonuses don't always synergize with the build or they're giving up too much to get a really small, say cat one boost, uh, with taking up these slots. But in this instance, in my opinion, if you do not have Terran goodbye, um, the, this three piece set is definitely ha uh, worth having, especially for Polaron because it synergizes with that, with the other passive boost from the console. Um, 
I also will use this on my torque builds to boost these. So I'll have these two in the back, same kind of configuration, the five torpedoes up front, build up that critical chance and severity. Um, I'm not using it on my main, uh, cause I have Terran Goodbye, but on my KDF, which was my original tune that I developed for torque builds, and she does massive amounts of damage. I've done, you know, over 600,000 DPS on a team run uh, with her. I'm using this morphogenic set to really get that, uh, that, that huge boost that you're getting for the critical chance, critical severity. Um, so that's why we have this kind of combination of a bunch of different firing modes here. Um, Let's go through the rest here. Um, we have distributed targeting. This is dealing some of the damage that's going to the primary target to other targets that are around. This is really just filler. This doesn't do a ton, um, but I had to have something there and it was better than tactical team. Uh, as with the budget build, we're using the um, recursive shearing. And what this is doing is building up damage in the target when you put this on them, your weapons damage. Um, and it builds up quite a bit over time. It can do a decent amount of damage. Now, only having it slotted at the level one is kind of a bummer, um, but you're just not able to slot anything higher on this ship. So it's kind of one of those things. It's This is just kind of adding in. It synergizes with beam overload, but in the past there's been meta builds where you're doing like dual beam banks and similar kind of build but maybe a 5-3 um and then you're using recursive shearing three and so you put that on a large target you're hitting it with beam overload dual beam banks and it's just astronomical uh the numbers i mean you're getting you know two million you know one hit maxes with this you're not going to get that with this at, at the the level one here unfortunately but i i'm open to other suggestions of what could be used out of the temporal it's kind of a weird thing because generally i'll use temporal stuff in you know more of my science builds and and those kinds of things so um, let me know what you guys think in the comments. What are some other uh, options? I mean, it doesn't even have to be on uh, at this particular slot for any of these that might be beneficial and more of a DPS centered, you know, kind of a build like that. All right. And lastly, for tactical, we are using chemocyte lace weapons, and this is giving us uh, radiation damage to foes. Uh, in one kilometer, and this is going to be from whoever you're firing on. Um, so there's a 10% chance to trigger with energy weapons, and it's a 100% chance with your projectile weapons. Uh, next, we are using in our first engineering slot emergency powered engines. And as always, this is to proc the duty officer that we have from the Phoenix pack that cools down evasive maneuvers. Uh, running two auxiliary to batteries, and this is for the three technicians, duty officers that I have um, that is giving me the cooldowns on my bridge officer abilities. Uh, next, we are using emergency powered weapons, and this is for the huge boost that you get uh, to your power settings for 30 seconds and the bonus damage that you get to your energy weapons. This is also proccing one of our starship traits as we discussed earlier. Uh, last for engineering, we are using Let It Go 1, and again, this is mainly filler. There wasn't anything else that really synergized with the build per se. This is giving us a little cold damage, which adds up to next to nothing on the parse, but it is giving a nice debuff, negative 5% or negative 5 damage resistance uh, reduction to the enemy every second for 20 seconds. So using this on larger uh, enemies is, uh, is pretty beneficial for uh, uh, grinding them down quicker. Science, we are using Hazard Emitters 1. This is here to give us that uh, that heal over time. This is also proccing some additional critical chance uh, from our specializations that we have slotted. And then lastly, we are using Very Cold in Space. This does a moderate amount of damage, um, a small kind of area of effect. I do find on Psy builds that this does really, really well. Um, and again, this is more of filler. Uh, but both this one and this one here, you can see how they're kind of themed, let it go and very cold in space. Um, they're both from the uh, summer or no winter event store, uh, but you could use something else like um, uh, structural analysis or I don't know if I'd use tactical or uh, tachyon beam. What else could you use there? I don't really have much else on. Um, on this tune, I think uh, destabilizing resonance beam that that would be useful if you were using maybe um, unconventional systems, you could go with like a tractor beam to help cool down um, 
like the M6 computer. I, I really only have one um, clicky that's from a universal console. So there's a lot of other options you can match, um, you know, mix in here. So in some of these things, if you don't have them, I mean, there's not really one thing that's going to make or break this build. I will tell you, if you don't have the morphogenic set, it's not going to be the same. <laughs> that's the one thing. The rest of this, use what you got, experiment, you know, and figure out what what's going to work for you. All right, let's take a peek at our bridge officer or our duty officers, and then we will uh, take a look at the parse run on this. Um, so a pretty standard setup here. I'm using just some cheap uh, duty officers, or they're somewhat cheap anyways. These are just green ones, and these are giving me a chance for critical severity uh, when firing energy weapons. I'm using two of those. Um, this duty officer here is the one from the Phoenix prize packs that you can get, and this is giving my cooldown on my evasive maneuvers when I use emergency power to engines. And then I am using three technicians, and you can see here I need to get another purple. I have two purples and one blue. It's probably not a big deal. Um, I've ran it like this for a long time, and it's one of those things where it's like I don't want to spend 20 million EC just to get one more purple. I just... Uh, would it be beneficial? Probably. But I mean, that really gets into that min max. And I'm at a point where I'm kind of over that. So this is working. Uh, if I came across one for cheap, I'd definitely pick it up. But um, if you're on a budget, start with your know, blues. That'll work as well. They're they're still expensive, but they're not as expensive as the purples. Um, but basically what's happening is anytime that you activate um, uh, ox to bat, Auxiliary power to batteries, it is going to give you a cooldown on your bridge officer abilities. So it's 10% cooldown, and there's three of them. So if this if they all were purple, just make the, the math easier, getting 30% cooldown time and Oxtabat cools down itself. So that's why we run the two copies. So every time I click either one of these, you're getting the cooldown on the other copy and your abilities. So you're able just to back and forth, back and forth, and that's how we're able to keep most of these abilities up pretty much full time. All right, uh, let's go ahead and jump into the parse run. It's going to be an ISA like normal. Um, if you guys would like to see me run some of these builds and something different, I definitely would not mind doing that just to switch it up. Um, I just find, at least for myself, when I put together a build, I, I always run it through that because it's just what we run all the time. It's a constant combat, and so it's easy to really you know get a good baseline. But not everybody really cares about that baseline. They're just looking for builds that work, and you know the numbers aren't really a big deal. And I'm totally cool with that. So if there's other maps that you want me to do some of these runs on when we're you know testing out or showing off builds uh let me know in the comments i'm, I'm definitely opening uh open to doing that and that might you know kind of change things up a little bit so it's not you know so monotonous all the time so let me know if you have any suggestions on that let's go ahead and jump into this run and see how this build does
All right, here we go. It's not bad. I did this run three different times. This was the highest I got. Um, I could probably do a little bit better, um, but you, you just got to get just you know the, the perfect run in. This build, Polaron in general, is not it's not in a bad place, especially with the Morphogenic set. Uh, you're not going to break any massive records with it. Now, again, also depending on your traits, if you had a bunch of lockbox traits and things like that, we could easily do well over 200 on this. But I'm able to get over 200 on a somewhat consistent basis. And I mean, just over 200, you know, 205, 210 with my free to play without even all the traits that I have on this ship um, with phaser. Um, so you know, you take that for what it's worth. Now, granted, that's also on a, you know, a Romulan that has all Romulan operative bridge officers and things like that, too. So uh, do bear that in mind. But Polaron is 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 a great energy type. I think it's in a decent place. Again, it's not going to be, you know, it's not the quote unquote meta, uh, but it's definitely in a good place where it's easy to get parts for it. Um, you can get um, Polaron weapons from mission drops in the uh, uh, the the Gamma arc. Um it's the Gamma. I always get that and, and, and Voyager mixed up here. We're going to make sure, so I'm not speaking incorrect here. Yeah, the Gamma Arc. Um, there's also once a lot of people, they took... So the, the Cardassian um, Arc used to have more missions in it. And let's just take a look at that because there's some really cool um, stuff that you can get. Here it is, Cardassian uh, Struggle. So there used to be more missions in this. It was... Uh, basically the lost dominion so basically the fleet that got disappeared by the wormhole aliens in deep space nine um they basically come back and take over deep space nine and you know the war's been over and they don't believe it and so there's this string of missions that are you know trying to get these Gemidar off of the station and you know basically get the fleet back under control they won't believe us i don't want to give it all away uh but it's an excellent string of missions i don't know why they took it out but once you complete um you have to complete this string of missions and you have to be at level 65 and turned in all the, the basic missions to Admiral Quinn. Um, and then you can run these uh, missions they are going to show up in your available tab and they're going to show up here as Lost Dominion. And there's a bunch of really good stuff in these uh, these missions for rewards. So you can get the Gemidar set space set that comes on um, you know your Gemidar characters. Um, so there's a full set you can get from that. You can also get the full ground set, Gemidar set that you can use on you know any tune um, that you've unlocked these missions on. Um, also, the last one is Boldly They Road. And this one you can get um, Dominion Polaron. Uh, and there's cannon and um, and beam weapons you can get out of that. In fact, I'm using these cannons on my juggernaut, and that is th that thing does crazy amounts of damage with the overall build and traits that I have. But these are these are really cool weapons that you can get for free for just running these. Here's a piece of that Gemidar set. Um, you see, and this is the same ones that you would get uh, default if you rolled a Gemidar tune. Uh, so if you go through the rest of these missions, the rest of those pieces and the ground stuff is uh, is all in there as well. So definitely check that out if you haven't looked at it before if you're level 65 and you've played through most of the missions these should already be unlocked so just go to your available tab take a look uh, through there um, you will only it'll if you haven't played them it'll show up with just the first one and i think that second wave so you have to play through them in order to unlock them and then you can rerun them individually however you want there to uh, to get the sets that you want so uh, in any case i don't want to get too sidetracked there but i just want to let you guys know that was there since this is a polar on focus build so let's take a look at this parse we did 182k is pretty respectable rest of the team did very well everybody did over 20 and and much more in some instances here like i always say if you're doing well over 20 or if you're doing 20 you're helping the team it's a good run and uh, we appreciate that if you're doing under 20 um you know you might want to take a look at your build and and improve on that if you don't care about that again as i always say that's fine uh, if you're happy with that that that's great um this game is here to have fun and uh you know if you're having just a great time running around doing 3k and uh never thought twice about that and you're happy then good for you i'm happy for you as well um let's go ahead and take a look at the breakdown here All right, so we have our Polaron arrays. These are going to be our, our crafted arrays that we have here. So there's three of them. They did 67. Um, so they did, what, about 22 and a half 
5k each, uh, which is pretty decent. You'll see these two items from the rep system that have that 2% bonus damage. They did very well. So 29k for a single weapon and 27k for a single weapon under beam overload three. Very, very good. Uh, tactical overload. I was looking at this earlier. I don't know what that is. Uh, if somebody knows what that is, let me know. I don't know that I've ever noticed that before. I don't know if it's something just in the glitch in the system or or what, something in the combat log. But if that is something that I need to know about, or if it maybe I know that there's some abilities, sometimes it doesn't know what to label it. So it'll give it, you know, a, a name of something else. It's just it, how it sees it. I don't know. If somebody knows, let me know what the deal is with that. Um, okay, next we have the Dark Matter Laced... Quantum Torpedo that did just under 10k. Uh, pretty decent. Our rec recursive shearing did uh, 7k. Again, not massive, um, but you know, for just one bridge officer ability that comes up very often, um, that's decent. You know, and bear that in mind too, if you're dealing with other ships where it has, you know, a command seating for temporal. Um, if if you have this up on, you know, the, the level three version of it, this number can get big. And especially what the overall build is, torpedo and some of this other stuff, it can get outrageously massive, especially some of the EPG stuff. Uh, on our pets, we did 7K. Uh, we'll take a look at that in a moment. Chemocyte, lace weaponry. Again, this is kind of all over the place for me. Um, sometimes... I run one on most ships. The way I organized this one, I went with two. Um, but a lot of times I'll see one doing way more than that. But that's generally on a torpedo build, right? So all of the all of the weapons firing are getting this procced every single time because it procs 100% of the time on torpedoes. But I do find that this ability in general, it's definitely worth slotting, but it can kind of be all over the place. So if you're running one torpedo up, up top, like I mentioned in the last video, make sure on your piloting, you're angling your ship in a way to where that those torpedoes are firing as much as possible as they come up without sacrificing your rear beam arrays. So you're just kind of pivoting back and forth. Sometimes you can get angled just right where it's in the front firing arc of the torpedo and it's still in the firing arc of your weapons in the back um, but really this is going to shine depending on how well you utilize those torpedoes um, okay and then we have dark matter torpedo this is just in a standard firing mode did 4k so the dark matter torpedo and standard firing mode and in the spread uh, did what about 13 and a half k so again not not terrible um Dark Matter uh, Dissolution. So this is the effect that that torpedo does. So we can add that on top of it. Now we're looking at closer to, what, 17 uh, K. So, you know, we're getting to a place where that is 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 very, very good. And that's just happening basically by itself, right? So, I mean, that's not even including the fact that it it's responsible for most of the chemocyte. But forgetting about that, that one torpedo it is doing you know 17k and there's nothing other than the spread one that's that's procking that to do anything special uh that's why i would say that torpedo is just amazing and um with the the proc that it has on it when you're dealing with science and damage over time and things like that it can really shine when you're mixing it in with torpedoes and chemocyte it, it can just do even even better so i mean this is just a torpedo with just a basic level one firing mode and we're getting 17 out of it so I, i'm a uh, I'm a dark matter torpedo salesman. I know I'm sorry, but um, so the rest of this stuff is pretty self-explanatory. So it starts to drop down quite a bit. I mean, like I said, before you look at let it go, it's, you know, it's garbage. Um, the damage part of it anyways, the debuff from it is, is very, very nice. Uh, let's take a quick look at the pets. So uh, chronic turbulence, this is from very cold in space. Um, and this does, uh, Decent. I mean, for just being a clicky, we're able to use multiple times, especially if you can use it when enemies are clumped up together. Um, this does really well. If you're doing this in conjunction with a science build, this shines even better. Um, and then we have our uh, our Nimbus Distress uh, signals. So these are the guys that I called in at the end, and uh, they heal me and do some damage. So overall, pets uh, did did pretty decent on this build here. All right. Well, I think that uh, that covers it. Again. Um, you know, for a free event ship with, you know, an advanced build on it that, you know, if you if I worked on this piloting and tweak some things, we should be able to hit, you know, 200 K with it without any kind of real big deal. If you have some better higher end traits like Terran Goodbye, shoot, if you use Terran Goodbye, even with the Morphogenic or um, 
uh, you use the DPRM and some of these other things, uh, you could easily push this over 200. But I wanted this to be an advanced build where you could spend, you know, you spent some money, you've bought some of these basic ships, you've accumulated um, some of the lobby consoles, and, you know, you're in a position where, you know, you're close to or, you know, able to put together a ship like this. But I didn't want to go into that kind of elite status where you're looking at lockbox ships and all these different kinds of things that are much, much more expensive to get. So, um, I hope that was helpful for you guys for that mid-level there. Um, if you have any questions, comments, um, anything you do different on that, again, I, I, I always really appreciate the feedback. Uh, again, check out the uh, the Discord. We do have that giveaway going for the Infinity Tier 6 lockbox ship. It'll be um, of your choice out of that lockbox. It is PC only. Hit up the Discord and uh, go to the giveaways channel. And if you need help, there's some build channels and uh, you know general Star Trek you know chat channels. Great community in there. And like I always say, I mean, there's quite a few guys in there. They they know way more than I do. Um, and accumulatively all together, uh, that that channel is uh, is an expert. So. Uh, everybody is more than welcomed. Um, if this was helpful, please considering subscribing to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. And again, uh, I'm always interested to hear your guys' comments. So, all right, guys, till next time. Thank you very much and uh, appreciate you watching. Stay safe.